Donald Cerrone has fought everyone. The American fighter has fought 55 times and not only was he one of the most entertaining fighters, but he also was very talented as he became a top contender at lightweight and also found some success at welterweight. But as good as he was, he was never able to capture UFC gold or any other major MMA title. So how good was Donald Cerrone actually? Donald began his MMA career on February 11th, 2006 at the age of 22. He won his first five fights by submission and in the process he became the ring of fire lightweight champion in april of 2007 he fought anthony Njikawani. after trading on the feet donald brought the fight down and locked up a triangle choke off his back that forced the tap Donald won his next two fights by submission, but one of those wins was overturned to a no contest after Donald tested positive for a diuretic. After this, he fought Danny Castillo at WEC 34. Danny brought the fight down early, but Donald locked up an armbar that forced the tap. Five months later, Donald fought Rob McCulloff. This was a competitive fight, but for the most part, Donald controlled the action both on the feet and on the ground. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At WEC 38, Donald fought for the lightweight championship against champion Jamie Varner. This fight was close everywhere it went, but in the fifth round, Jamie was unable to continue due to an illegal knee. So the fight went to the judges scorecard where he was awarded with the technical split decision. Five months later, Donald fought James Krause. Donald dropped James with the right hand and locked up a rare naked choke that forced the tap. At WEC 43, Donald fought for the interim lightweight championship against Benson Henderson. The fight went for all five rounds, and although Donald had some moments, Benson had more due to his wrestling. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At WEC 45, Donald fought Ed Ratcliffe. The two went to war on the feet for the first two and a half rounds, but in the final half of the third, the fight made its way to the ground, and this led to a rear naked choke from Donald that forced the tap. Four months later, Donald fought for the WEC lightweight championship against champion Benson Henderson. In contrast to their first fight, this one ended quick as Benson locked up a guillotine that forced a tap. Five months later, Donald fought Jamie Varner. This was an action-packed fight that saw Donald win most of the exchanges both on the feet and on the ground. After three rounds, he won by unanimous decision. Donald went on to defeat Chris Hordecki at WEC 53, which would be his last fight with the promotion as they were bought out by the UFC. And after winning his debut fight with the UFC against Paul Kelly, Donald went on to fight Wagner Rocha at UFC 131. Donald controlled the action on the feet and avoided Wagner's attempts to to bring the fight down. By the end, Donald won by unanimous decision. Two months later, he fought Charles Oliveira. Donald hurt Charles with a body shot, and once the action went down, he threw ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. At UFC 137, Donald fought Dennis Seaver. After dropping Dennis with a right, Donald locked up a rare naked choke that forced the tap. Two months later, Donald fought Nate Diaz. The two traded on the feet for the entire fight, and although Donald had his moments, Nate had way more. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. After this defeat, Donald fought Jeremy Stevens. For all three rounds, the two traded on the feet, but it was Donald who was controlling most of the action. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 150, Donald fought Melvin Gillard. Although Melvin looked close to finishing the fight early with strikes, Donald recovered and connected with a head kick and a right hand that knocked Melvin out. Five months later, Donald fought Anthony Pettis. Anthony outstruck Donald before connecting with a body kick and punches that ended the fight. At UFC 160, Donald fought KJ Nunes. Donald dominated in this fight everywhere it went. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Following this win, he fought Hafa Dos Anjos. Donald was unable to get much done as he got outstruck and outwrestled for most of the fight. By the end, Rafael won by unanimous decision. At UFC 167, Donald fought Evan Dunham. Donald brutalized Evan on the feet and on the ground, and in the second, he brought the fight down and locked up a triangle choke that forced the tap. Two months later, Donald fought Adriano Martins. Donald connected with a head kick in round one that knocked Adriano out cold. Following this win, he fought Edson Barboza. After going back and forth on the feet, Donald connected with a left hand that dropped Edson. This led to a rear naked choke that forced a tap. Three months later, Donald fought Jim Miller. Donald denied most of Jim's takedowns and connected with some brutal shots on the feet. This led to a head kick and a punch that ended the fight. At UFC 178, Donald fought Eddie Alvarez. Eddie looked good 
early and had his moments throughout, but as the fight went on, Donald began finding more success on the feet and on the ground. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 182, Donald fought Miles Jury. Donald was dominant everywhere this fight went, which in the end earned him the unanimous decision victory. 15 days later, Donald stepped in as an injury replacement to fight Benson Henderson. Although Donald had some moments in this fight, it was Benson who was controlling most of the action on the feet. Although 12 out of 14 media outlets scored this for Benson, it was Donald who won by unanimous decision. At UFC 187, Donald fought John McDessie after his original opponent, Habib Nurmagomedov, pulled out. Donald outstruck John for most of this fight before connecting with a head kick in round 2 that broke John's jaw and thus forcing him to stop the fight. This 8 fight win streak led to a shot at the title. His opponent was champion, Rafael Dos Anjos. It took Rafael 96 seconds to finish Donald with a kick to the body and a barrage of punches. Following this defeat, Donald moved up to welterweight for the first time in his career. His first opponent at 170 was Alex Oliveira. Despite Alex starting off aggressively, Donald was able to take him down and lock up a triangle choke that forced a tap. Four months later, he fought Patrick Cote. Donald dominated on the feet and on the ground, and eventually, he finished Patrick in the third with punches. At UFC 202, Donald fought Rick Story. After some early back and forth action, Donald connected with a punch and a head kick in round two that hurt Rick. This led to more punches that eventually forced the ref to step in. At UFC 206, Donald fought Matt Brown. Donald battered Matt on the feet, and this eventually led to a head kick in round three that knocked Matt out. A month later, Donald fought Jorge Masvidal. The two traded on the feet, but for the most part, Jorge was finding more success. And although he looked close to ending the fight in round one, it was early in round two where he connected with punches that led to the finish. At UFC 214, Donald fought Robbie Lawler. Donald had his moments in this action-packed fight, but for the most part, Robbie was pressing forward more and connected with the better shots. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Three months later, Donald fought Darren Till. Darren denied the takedowns and this led to him tagging Donald on the feet, which eventually led to the first round finish by strikes. Following this defeat, Donald fought Yancey Medeiros. After rocking Yancey a few times, Donald dropped him before the end of the first, which led to the finish. Four months later, Donald fought Leon Edwards. Although Donald made this a competitive fight both on the feet and on the ground, Leon was connecting with the more damaging shots. After five rounds, he won by unanimous decision. Five months later, Donald fought Mike Perry. Although Mike brought the fight down, it was Donald who was able to lock up an armbar that forced the tap. After this, Donald went back down to lightweight and fought Alexander Hernandez. Donald absolutely schooled him wherever the fight went. This led to a head kick and ground and pound in round 2 that ended the fight. Following this win, Donald fought Al Iaquinta. Al had some moments in this fight, but for the most part, Donald was brutalizing him on the feet. After 5 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 238, Donald fought Tony Ferguson. This was a wild, action packed fight that saw both men have their moments on the feet. But then in round 2, Tony began to pick up momentum. Sadly, this fight ended prematurely as Donald's eyes shut after he blew his nose going into round 3. This forced the doctor to stop the fight. Three months later, Donald fought Justin Gaethje. Justin picked Donald apart on the feet, which led to punches near the end of the first that hurt Donald and eventually ended the fight. At UFC 246, Donald fought Conor McGregor. It took Conor 40 seconds to connect with a head kick and punch that forced the ref to step in. At UFC 249, Donald fought Anthony Pettis. This was a back and forth fight on the feet for all three rounds, but it was Anthony who landed the better shots throughout. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Four months later, Donald fought Nico Price. These two went at it on the feet, and although Nico had more moments, he got a point deducted for eye pokes. So by the end, the fight was ruled as a draw. But later, the decision was overturned after Nico tested positive for marijuana. Eight months later, Donald fought Alex Morono. Alex picked Donald apart on the feet, which led to the finish by strikes before the end of the first. At UFC 276, Donald fought Jim Miller. Prior to this fight, Donald announced that this would be the last one of his career. The two went back and forth on the feet and on the ground, but in round two, Jim secured a guillotine choke that forced Donald to tap. 
Despite this defeat, Donald seemed happy to call it a career in his post-fight interview at the age of 39. And after 55 fights as an MMA fighter, it was good to see him end this chapter and ready to move on to the next. So after going 36 and 17 with two no contests, how good was Donald Cerrone actually? Donald was a fighter's fighter. He has not only fought many of the top names in this sport, but he also fought very often. He was a prize fighter, but also a top level talent. He put on many entertaining fights fights and performances, but at the same time, he was one of the best fighters both at lightweight and welterweight, and he was skilled all around. His punches were strong and accurate, and the same could be said about his kicks, and his knees and elbows were also extremely brutal. But that's just his striking. When the fight went down, his top control was great as he'd attack with vicious ground and pound or go for the submission, but his submission game was even better when he was off his back. He was an all-around force, and tie all this up with his toughness, you had a fighter who wasn't afraid to get in a brawl, which is why so many loved him. And this led to some nice win streaks during his career. The first being his run once he entered the UFC, the next being an 8 fight win streak that led to a title shot, the third being his welterweight run, and the final one being his resurgence after becoming a father. He had so many epic phases during his career, and even though he lost fights between these streaks, he still managed to bounce back. No matter how bad things seemed, he kept sticking around, and whether it was a win or defeat, he was still someone many people respected. Because in general, it just seemed like he loved it all. And that love resonated with the fans. But the defeats were definitely hard on his career, especially when it came to him capturing a major title, which is something he was never able to do during his illustrious career. Because when it came to big time fights, Donald was unable to show up. Maybe it was because there was a lot of pressure in these moments, maybe it was because those opponents were that good, or maybe it was a mix of both. But whenever it seemed like Donald was going to break through, he'd end up losing which led him back to square one. And after years of fighting the best as consistently as he did, the damage was bound to catch up with him. Which is why the tail end of his career ended the way it did. So when you look at his overall record of 36 wins, 17 defeats, and 2 no contests, it seems like one that isn't very impressive. But when you understand how good he was in his prime, and how he fought with the mentality of anywhere at any time, you'd understand that Donald Cowboy Boy Cerrone was a very special fighter. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10.